so the in the traditional Chinese medicine, they I mean their seasons are different, right? And each region of China has a different uh, climates too. And we in San Francisco have very unique climate. So not just a season, but just go with like we have really cold summer. So we may not want to take a lot of um, promote urination, like uh, uh, watermelons, for instance. Um, hope when you, where you where you are, you might want to you know take a lot of um, you, you start to have. I mean, you're already warm right now, so you might you also want to be aware of individual seasons in your region so is it is it dry is it tend to get dry or is it cool and damp i mean we because of the uh the fog we get like cold dampness too so i think we are more susceptible for the uh dampness issues so you know be um, um aware of what's happening, not just the season. We don't, I mean, we don't really have a season, so we don't really have a hot summer. So just look at the, you know, if you have the book, look at the uh, a book, but just also pay attention to your, um, to your season, your micro, microclimates. Okay, any questions from last week? And thank you again, Jill, for the wonderful class. And so just to review from last week, kind of connecting the Qigong and the, uh, the Chinese medicine and the Meridian theory that um, Jill talked about, there's a lot of triple burner came out during the uh, movement and Remember the uh, triple burner, the, uh, the, we call it San Jiao San is triple, Jiao is like the burner, like warmth. Um, and there's a different, so San, it's called San Jiao, triple burner, triple warmer, they're all the same thing. So the, it's the three levels pipe system, basically. So it's not, uh, it doesn't exist as in physical organ, but it's a function. The function is to connect all the organs and also it brings the original chi, the true chi into all the, um, the meridians and channels. So that's why the Sanjiao is very, uh, very important in Qigong because you wanna circulate um, the chi into every parts of the body. So um, that's the function of Sanjiao. And the Mingman, um, the one that you were doing this, it's the, the Mingman means Ming is the uh, life, Men is the gate. So it's the life gate. It's basically, it's the source of life, source of energy, source of it's the origin of our lives. It's all stored in, um, it's all kind of starts the sparks from the Mingman. So when the, um, and also Dan Tian, it's, that's where you, at the end, you put everything back into this place below your belly button, that's a Dan Tian, that's where, so it's all kind of related to the kidney area, right? On the back side of the kidney area versus the front part of the kidney area. So they're um, both related to, so kidney is the original chi, the original, um, it's the origin of us, right? So the Mingmeng fire on the back side, Dantian, it's not in the front, it's like right in the middle. That's where the, uh, you, store chi and also at the end of the qigong or any kind of tai chi or gong fu exercises you put all the all the chi that you didn't use back into the dantian so that's why you end 
putting everything back and put them, wrap them nicely in Dantian. All right, so I think that was the only thing that I wanted to talk about. Okay, so Sanjiao is, again, it's, it's a common, you hear a lot in Chinese medicine, but you don't really hear it in the, um, in a biomedicine because it doesn't really physically exist, but it's, it's a function and it has an important function. All right, so let's start with the warm up exercise. Then we'll sit and, and learn more stuff. So um, I wanted to talk about the hip joint. So you don't have to stand up, but you need to back up a little. So you will have, oh, sorry. You will have some space to lift to your knee. Okay, so again, if you have any injuries or limited range of movement, any pain, do not do any of the movement or make the movement smaller. And if you have any questions about alternative uh, movement, speak up, let me know. Okay, so let's start with our usual leg uh, ankle circles first okay so let's do 10 and 10 really nice and slow this doesn't have to be up high it just make sure this is off the um off the floor okay 10 times one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, other way, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Let's do point flex. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and switch. Just lift off the floor, 10 circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, Point and flex, point your toes, flex your foot, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and down. Now, come forward just a little bit and make sure one leg at a time, lift your knee up and down. When you lift your knees, Make sure you're pulling up, tighten your tummy so you don't want to be using the body to pull your knee up. Pull, use your abdominal muscles to pull your knee up, right? So it's kind of like you're crunching as you need, lift your, lifting your knee up. Up, down, switch, up, down. Now, very gently, lift your knee up, just not too high, just halfway. Just reach out and in to open at your hip joint, four, five, okay, switch, five times. One, keep your tummy tight, two, stabilize your core, three, Four, five, okay. Now you're gonna lift your knee up, but make sure, again, this shouldn't be hurting. 
So you can hold this way or underneath, whichever you're comfortable with. Doesn't have to be high, just make sure you're comfortable, okay? I kind of like to hold right under my uh, kneecap, but make sure whatever you're comfortable with. So, and you are going to work with your spine. So again, if you have any issues with your spine, um, just be gentle. So all you're gonna do is now lift your knee up, lift your chest up, hold on, and now round your back and head down towards your knee, breathe out. Okay, hold your knee, breathe in, and breathe out. Round your back, head down. One more, breathe in. And breathe out. Okay. Now, look forward, chest up. Now, what you're gonna do, now, you wanna give a little space. So step out with the bottom leg a little bit so you have, have a little more space here. You are going to draw circles. Up, out, in, two. So guide with your arms, with your hands, five, six, seven, eight, then you go the other way, one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, and down. Then you switch, same thing on the other side. Lift up. You can make sure this shouldn't be hurting anywhere. Breathe in, lift your chest up. Pull your knee up to your chest. Now hold on to your knee and breathe out. Round your back, head down towards your knee. Breathe in, <coughs> breathe out. Okay, one more, breathe in. Round your back, breathe out. Now look forward, walk out with the bottom leg. Gonna do the circles. One, eight times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and down. Now let's work a little bit, um, kind of like, this is kind of like a self massage, but um, you know, the fascia is what's wrapping your muscles and it's right underneath your, um, uh, between your skin, between your fat and the muscle is the fascia. So sometimes, you know, the tight IT band that we all have um, the IT band is called ilio tibial. So tibia is here. Uh, iliac is the part of your hip. What's connect to your hip to your knee on the side, and this gets really tight because because we live. Um, and sometimes when you have the tightness on the side of your thigh, it's it's also this is IT band is connected to the um, your glute muscle and glute muscle is connected to the lower back. So sometimes this tightness here can pull and can, can create some back issues. So really easy. All you're gonna do is you are not gonna you are going to grab your meat. 
on the side of your thigh. So just kind of pinch and see if you have any difference in tightness or do you feel some kind of achy, sticky? Is it easy to pinch or is it really hard? So you could also use both hands. Just, you're just pinching, pinching the meat. Just to be aware, just try both sides and see if you have any difference in sensation. For me, I have no issues here. I have really tight, um, but also when I work on here, it goes all the way up to my back. So just, just notice, just notice what your body's doing. Just gentle, gentle. And now you're gonna do is grab, pinch, and a little bit of a shake, just very gentle shake. Grab and shake. Very small. You can grab and shake. And all the way up on the almost to the hip joint. Grab and shake. And just kind of do the gentle. Kind of rubbing the surface of your skin from the knee at the end up towards your um, the inguinal crease so where where you bent from knee up. Okay, now we are going back to our listening to a keto session. How was it? Excellent. Good, good. So you can try that with anywhere, anywhere you can always, wherever you can pinch. Pinch and see, you could try that with your back of your neck. Don't, don't do it in the front, but it's, you know, where you're, um, so we talked about here too. So the pinching, gentle pinching is always a good thing to do. It's it's not a lot of work on your hands, but uh, it it helps with the circulation. Okay. Now we did the hip joint. Today I want to start with talking about the spine. Where is my presentation week eight we are in week eight hi i am sharing screen Share. back on my screen. Okay, so the spine and back shoe points. Back shoe points are the ones I'm going to talk about, but the points along the spine, there is the important like tonification points for the uh, all the organs, all the uh, the 12 organs that we have talked about. So before we go into that, I want to talk about the spine. So that's us. Um, so the, I was going to talk with my model. I'll do that later. Okay, so we have, so this is the neck cervical, right? That's cervical. 
thoracic is the upper back, mid back, right? That's thoracic. And the lumbar is the the uh, lower back, lumbar spine. Sacrum is the uh, like a triangular shape behind almost to the um, on the back of your um, where the lower back is connected to your glute. That's the little flat triangular shape bone is the sacrum right here and the coccyx is the tailbone at the end okay so we have seven cervical spines and what we can when we reach behind our neck and the back the the little bumps that we're touching are so this is the this is this is the back And that's towards your tummy uh, front. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So the little pointy guys, these are the ones that you can feel on the neck because the very top almost goes into the bottom of your skull. So you can't feel probably to four. The big one where almost the neck becomes become the shoulder, that big bone you can bump, you can feel, that's probably C6, C7. So that's the cervical, means C, cervical spine uh, 607. That's the very end of the cervical spine. The thoracic spine has 12. And each thoracic vertebrae the little bones they are connected to the rib bones that makes sense i'll show you the other uh photo later that's why there's a 12 because we have 12 ribs right so that each one has on the side is attached to the rib bones and the lumbar of course is the uh it's the lower and the sacrum has Sacrum is more, it's, it's a flat bone, but it's the fused uh, bones, um, has the five fused bones. You see, uh, no, it's five, yeah, five. Because you have a little, you probably have seen, has the four little holes, and that's like, that's where the bone, each bone um, used to be. Okay, any questions so far? Right here, the um, on the side, you see, so here is the top view of the each bone. So the bumps that you are feeling on the back is this spinous process. This is the uh, little process that goes out. So the on the side is called transverse because it's on the side transverse process and the spinous process goes sticks back and that's what we are feeling so those are the bony landmarks um when you know acupuncturists are feeling when you're pointing a location on the back um points now since we're in the vicinity i wanted to uh revisit the uh diaphragm I'm not sure if you could tell this was a diaphragm um, diaphragm is a muscle and it's it's huge so the diaphragm is attached to this is called xiphoid process this is the tip of your chest bone so you don't want to touch it because it's like ugh, it's like <laughs> it might make you sick but that's the bottom of your uh, breastbone that's that xiphoid process and it attaches to that and also on this side no this is the top view no it's the bottom view so you're looking up from the bottom of the uh diaphragm and of course and you need little holes right you can tell because the um the esophagus has to go through from the top to to connect to the um um 
to the stomach and also um, the all the major arteries and veins have to go through too. So it has a little holes for that things to go through, the pipes to go through. Okay, so that's the bottom. So you're looking up and then, so that's the side. So on the side of diaphragm, it's attached to the um, inner surface. So it's inside inner surface of seven to 12 ribs. So that's, I think that's 12. So, no, I think that's 11. 11, 10, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the 12 is almost in the back. So I think, I don't think you can see it from here, but so that's, it's attached to the inside of all these ribs. Then that's the back view. You can see this one. So that's your, that's your 12th rib. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So it's attached to all this. And the, in the front, you could see it's attached to the, um, in front of your lumbar spine so uh it's three so lumbar three two one so it's attached to the um this inside of the lumbar spine too so it's kind of crazy so it's kind of wraps around the bottom part of your chest cavity okay is that a good visual? So see the, um, as you could see, so there's a 12th rib here. So that means this is thoracic T12, right? Then it starts, so that's, this is L1, two, three, four. Okay. I think that's enough for the, oh, and um, the breathing mechanism. We talked about it. And again, um, diaphragm is a muscle and the muscle only either contract or relax, right? So inhalation, so when you inhale, you need to increase the uh the lung volume right so in inhalation diaphragms contract when when contracts the muscle contracts it shortens so see how this is shorter than this yeah so this is contraction happening when contracts it increases the volume of the uh, chest area. So when in uh, when it relaxes, right? Relaxes, it decreases, right? Decreases the um, lung, the volume. So the air goes out. That's it. Any questions that make sense? I, I have a question looking at that and thinking about that. Uh huh. The di the diaphragm does it act automatically or does it respond to us taking in the air? I don't know. I, I mean, we don't. Of course, course, we don't think about it. You said I it think was a it, muscle. Yeah, you said it was a muscle. So I'm wondering. It's the muscle, but it's different from uh, the the. Uh, exoskeletal muscles that we are aware of moving them but the breathing and the heart movement we don't control them right so it's connected to the breathing nervous system right so it's it just it just moves with the uh the inhalation exhalation mechanism 
it's yeah, all part of one, the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think Akil, when it when you have think about like soft belly, you mm -hmm. relax the muscles so that it can just expand a little more. But yeah. the diaphragm is always moving. Yes. So like, if you have again, if you have a tight intercostals, and if you are not allowing this to come down, it's 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 easy. It's harder for the diaphragm to expand fully so yeah soft belly yeah thank you jill so you, you can you can assist um the breathing to be more effective and more increasing more depth is that a, does that answer your question thank you yes okay cool all right so now we are going to go on to, we talked about the landmarks. Diaphragm, breathing. Okay, now here is the spine. So, and I'm going to talk about the back shoes. So the, um, as I mentioned earlier, there are corresponding points on the back to um, shoe means transporting. So it's like by, by, uh, you can access the, uh, the organs from those back points. So that's why it's called back shoe points. And uh, acupuncturists use it as uh, to tonify your um, organs. So if you're like, if you're tired or you stress out, you lie down and you get the back treatment. And then you're you know, um, and it, it tonifies your organs. Um, so you see, these are the, see little bumps. Those are the spinal processes. Those are the ones that you feel and you can count. And again, this is our friend, um, shoulder blades. So the points are located so you draw a line at the shoulder um the shoulder blades and this is the center center line and the points are located in the halfway between these two lines so this is where that's the line Okay, so what can you tell where is, because I drew all that, but so this is the first rib right here. That's the first rib, right? So this is T, thoracic one, right? And these two are cervical. So that's cervical spine seven and six. That's seven, C7, seven, C6. Sorry, it's messy. So do you remember way back in when we were talking about all oh, the wind points, wind gate, wind mansion, wind pool? So the um these are all in the the urinary bladder line. So that's what's confusing. It's it's the UB line, but actually you can access to the other points. That's just what it is. Okay, so the wind point is at uh, T2. So this is like off the subject, but this is the wind gate. So that's why we talked about when you feel like you're coming down with a uh, cold or you been cold and you were tired make sure you keep your back of your neck really warm. So this is also another point. This is the wind, is that wind gate? Yeah, it's the wind gate. And the wind pool and wind uh, mansion is up here on the on the up on the neck and also the base of the skull. 
Okay, so that's the wind gate at the level of T3, <clears throat> which is right here. I'm going to change the line, I mean the color. So this is the lung point. Lung. I'm just going to go down. So this is uh, pericardium. This is the heart. Okay. So this is all the chest, chest orient points within kind of in the, uh, between the shoulder blades. <clears throat> and the liver is, so that's about seven, eight, nine. So the liver, so that's liver gallbladder, spleen, stomach, and that's, that's kind of the mid, mid thoracic, it's like the mid, um, like abdominal. <clears throat> now, the L1 is right here. So, now this is Sanjiao, the um, <clears throat> the triple burner. Sanjiao, then sorry, then kidney. Then you're gonna go to it's four. That's large intestine, kind of like behind where the large intestine is, right? And right by, see the four four little holes these are this is the sacrum right this is the sacrum and that's the uh five fused bone so on this yellow line a level is the first foramen that's a uh, small intestine and second one is the urinary bladder so that's all 12 um organs so that's why it's it's kind of it's kind of handy so if anything take a shower the let the uh warm water run um all the way on the uh, um along your spine and that uh, you're tonifying your um organs so i just kind of wanted to mention that's also uh uh, acupuncture does use those points to um, to address your issues. So sometimes when you have have you um, experienced when you have any like stomach issues and you like press on right behind your stomach, does that make you feel better? Have you like noticed that one? Yeah, yeah. So because you're pressing on your stomach and spleen points. So. I think your body and you, we kind of know what it is. Um, and the kidney points, that's where you um, do the Mingman. Mingman fire is uh, located in the, uh, mi mi um, in, in between two kidneys. So the actual organ kidneys are like a little higher up, it's right here. But the kidney point is on, L2 level. Okay, now I want to, I think that's it with the slides. Now I want to come back to D looking at the actual bones okay. any questions so far are we doing good i wanted to mention those points that you you showed us guys on that uh, diagram that you had there. Those were like uh, pressure points where a person who does acupuncture would yes. focus. Yes. Um, it depends on what they're uh, what they're trading, 
but those are like a, a good go-to points okay. and the shiatsu person they they go with that too was that on the left hand side of the body or the right hand side? no it's on the bilateral on the both side of so okay i see i see what you're saying okay it's the same it, positions but it just runs across yeah so the line is between the spine and the shoulder blades the midline between shoulder blades line the inside of the shoulder blade line and the uh the spine so okay. the those points rise just these two lines along the spine great yeah okay, yep. okay. so i wanted to talk about sacrum everybody know where your sacrum is so that's the sacrum that's the tailbone so the sacrum is this is where like your butt crack starts right so between and you have this um hip bone you can feel it right the hip bone goes down and it connects to so when you hear um you've heard of um si joint and that's the si joint this is s is the sacrum i is the ilium is these two big bones ilial sacral joint so that's the si joint That's your thing. Uh, anything I wanted to talk about is that, as you could see from the um, the diagram in the in the earlier slide, the spine has the natural curve, right? And this doesn't really have a natural curve. She's not very ergonomic, but the the neck goes in, right? neck is like this way kong fix well which way you're looking at so the neck neck is curved this way right and the thoracic spine is curved this way and the lumbar spine is curved this way right because that's the natural curve and it's have a different curvature because if it's just that straight it, it, you are um you're gonna have to like a, a lot of pressure pans onto your bone and it's, it's just just too hard and we're gonna break so this is to work like the spring it, it absorbs the shock so um that's we're amazing machine okay so any questions on the structures and bones? Are we good? Okay. And okay, that's that's that. Let me put these away. So today I wanted to um talk about the face and scalp and eyes and do a little training on your face uh and eyes and also to end when we do the um the ending exercise i want to uh, talk about the little exercise also jill did a little uh using the core and relaxing the arms or wrapping your arms around it those are really 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 crucial important concept to have when you move so i want to talk about that too so Let's go take a, a quick break, four minutes, go wash your hands. And if you need to moisturize your face, just use your regular moisturizer because you, you know, we will be moving your scalp and it's going to move your face. So make sure your face is not like dry, dry, because I don't want your face to be crackly. So put the moisturizing on. Clean your hands, have some water, and be back in four minutes. So that is back at 4.55.
back. Catch. Four. Kiel? Yeah. This is Susie. Hi. Hi. As, as I'm sitting here in my chair, my back is hurting me. You know, is there is there just something real quick I could do to alleviate that discomfort? Um or a stretch or how's how's your chair? It's the same in every chair. I have many different chairs. How long do you sit? Well, we've been sitting here since four o'clock. Okay, so <laughs> and and does it does it start to hurt like when you like are you are you better when you move? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh like sometimes just, I think twisting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It, it's not to worry. <laughs> when you sit, this stretches and this shortens. So you could try to see contracting the glute muscle to stretch your hip flexor muscle. It just um, when it gets when it gets tightened, you could try. Just squeeze and release. You could do this. You could do a hip circles. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. To get all these moving. Yeah. Right. Um, this tightness can also, um, you could try the quad stretch. Um, when it start to hurt you you have to get up and start moving ah okay yeah okay thank you so the standing um, is the most important thing when you're when you're when your back start to hurt when you're sitting down stand up so you want to stretch this area <laughs> yeah. so when you do that and also squeeze your glutes just purposely that stretches this area does that make sense? Yeah. Because it's the opposing muscle. It feels quite good now. My oh, oh good. good. But but it won't be long before it all. Another thing, speaking of pinching, 
you could do it's just kind of funny to do this in front of my computer but you can like pinch your <laughs> pinch your meat like in this along your um love handles the uh yes but also where your hip bone is so okay and you can feel one part is a little bit tighter than the other part but you could just that kind of releases the um uh, the fascia so that sometimes help it feels good at that yeah yeah good akio um on um the e iso band that you refer to mm -hmm. um it um geez, I, I recall with the foam roller people roll on that to stretch that band yeah, out it's that's, brutal, brutal that's hard that's just really it's brutal just, so, yeah, so is that is that a muscle is that a muscle or a ligament it's not a muscle thing? it's a fascia Oh, it's so, fascia. Oh, yeah. okay. So uh, it's called IT band. I did I right, right. This. Uh, those are called. Yeah, that foam roller, brutal. Yum, yum. That's a medical term for it. <laughs> it's a technical term. Those are, that's right. Pinch your yum, yums um yes the uh foam roller don't don't do it unless no, that's, I, I don't yeah it's, it's, years it's, ago <laughs> it's horrible because you're well, like putting entire body weight onto well, that and uh, yeah so the right. when you have to do the foam roller my no. recommendation is start from the very top meaty part which is your glute area on the side of the glute that has right. the muscle that's that's is like converging into the IT band. Oh, so right. you can roll on your uh, on your glute and also not on the IT band, but the on top the your quads are what's lying under the IT band. So you could start rolling on the oh, front, like the meaty yeah, yeah. part of the yeah. and yeah. Yeah. It, it's okay it's okay because i i don't use the foam roller anymore okay so this is the better solution to roll oh because yeah. you have you have control over how much to put and you you can't you can't put too much onto this so these right are, yeah yeah i could use this yeah oh very good you're right yeah, yeah. Okay. so make sure that might be it's it might be too knobby but if that so just start gentle right yeah but that's that's the alternative and better alternative to the uh, yeah, oh man. Man. Oh um, man. thank you sure okay so back to face unless you have more questions about other stuff are we good no. to go yep okay I had a question, uh, two questions. What was the IT band? IT band is iliotibial band. It's a fascia that runs across the side of your thigh. Mm. And that, because it's attached to a big muscles, it gets really tight. Mm. And because um, it pulls from the both side, and it is a fascia so which is not the muscle so it has less blood circulating so once it's tight it's hard to get it like loosened up so uh and women tend to have a tighter it band because we have wider hips and we have more more room to move so it has to stay tight so uh like women and runners tend to have a tight IT band, but we all have a really tight IT band. Mm, thank you. And the other question was about, um, you were talking about sitting. Um, I've been sitting on a tall kitchen stool and it actually feels pretty good because I can't really slump. I mean, I can slump, but I can't uh -huh. slump against the back or down in my lower back. So that's great. And also you may not, it's, because it's really high, so your leg doesn't bend as much, right? Right. So, 
think, Linda, it's another alternative is to sit on the, the bar stool. Mm -hmm. um, also good to have a little um, a cushion underneath. So it has a little, um, uh, it has a give. So it's not so, it's a little more forgiving to your butt. I figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Questions. Thank you, everybody. Oh, sorry. Got it. IT band. Ilio tibio. So Ili, Ilio is the top part. Tibio is the bottom part. Tibia is the the lower leg muscle. Okay, the face and the head. When do you work on your head? I mean, on the scalp. In Qigong class. Oh, you do? <laughs> all, the, all the time, Akio. <laughs> Very good. See how the face doesn't is start right here. Its face is all the way out to the decollete and all the way back here. It's the entire head is connected to your face. And we strain our eyes a lot because we look at the screen. We that's what we do. Here, read, talk. So so I kind of start with this scalp and eyes today the face we can um we can talk more about it later so everything goes to here connected to here so we can start with the shoulder rolls so many ways to do it you could if you if you don't have any shoulder issues you can always do the swimming forward going back forward back that's like really easy way to do. If you have any shoulder issues and you can lift up, just do the shoulder rolls, just with the shoulders. Be aware of your shoulder blades moving, shoulder blades going up, back toward each other and down forward away from each other. So you wanna feel the shoulder blades moving. Down, so start small and make it big. So, and if you are, if your shoulder is okay, you can reach up and around. <laughs> up and around. So make sure when you do this, again, watch out if this doesn't hurt, make sure it doesn't hurt your shoulders. And also when you're up here, watch out for your head for not going this way when you're up everything goes up and back and down breathe, in. <laughs> breathe out two more breathe in breathe out so make sure when you're here don't look down go up so this is long and down. Good. All right. So now <laughs> pressing down. So there's your um, breastbone, chest bone. Press down. Push in and down as you lift your chin up. So you feel a little stretch in the front part of your neck. And relax, look forward. Push your chest down, chin up. Don't hold your breath, keep breathing. And down. Again, push your hands down, chin up. Now, you're going to stretch all this front kind of toward to the side. So keep your hands, but also shift 
toward your uh, clavicle on one side. So push down and away and your chin goes up that way. Very gently, don't hurt yourself. And you want to just kind of breathe into that stretch. And relax. Okay, two more. Pull your arms down and away and sideway and chin up and away. So you want to work on the opposing direction. And relax. One more. Push down and away. And chin up and away. Uh oh. Going home? Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. The other side. Bye 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 bye. Okay, bye bye. bye Underneath bye, bye, bye. the clavicle, but still the heel of your palm touches the uh the top part of your uh chest bone. Push down and away. Side and chin up. And relax. Again, push down and away. One more, relax, now push down and away, look up and away. And relax. So basically the pulling down of the hands and the direction of the chin should be the opposing direction, right? Okay, so let's do a little shoulder rolls. Okay, now, fingers around your ears. So there's the bones. So just kind of fit it around on the top part of the ears. So you're going to push in gently. So again, it's not rubbing, but pushing in and you're moving the skin, right? Push in and do the circles very small circles you want to feel so by moving this you want to feel that your like eyes and your forehead area is also moving yes yes you feel that, that movement Okay, move up a little, still stay on the side of your head, push in, move the skin. Up one more time, on the side, push in and mini circles okay now random squeeze massage around all around your scalp okay and back of your head where you feel the little bump right before it becomes the meaty part find the a little bump here again push in and just give a little shake okay 
Okay. Now from the back of your head, comes behind the head and bring to your clavicle, nice and gentle. Okay, now your forehead right over with the fingertips, right over your um, eyebrows. Push in and just give a little shake, 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 just side to side, very small movement. So you're moving the skin, go up a little, it's like the mid forehead. So you're feeling um, the skin moving over the bone, right? Okay, go up to the hairline where your uh, forehead becomes the scalp. Shake, shake, shake. Okay, now from the hairline back over Okay, now you are going to pinch your eyebrows. So you're gonna divide this into like five sections. So one, two, three, four, five. Five is the, the tip, the end tip of the um, eyebrows. So start from the middle. So you're gonna go squeeze. Move out, squeeze, move out, squeeze, squeeze, and at the end, squeeze the eyebrows. Two more. You go squeeze, release, move out, squeeze, release, move out, squeeze, release, move out, squeeze, move out, squeeze. One more again from the center, squeeze, move out, squeeze, out, squeeze, out, squeeze, out, squeeze. Very good. Now, very gently from the midline over your um, eyebrows to your um, temple. So all along, so you wanna go from here to there. And gentle circles at your temple. Gently runs side of the, uh, the face, neck, to the clavicle. Okay, now the eyes. So again, the behind the eyes, there are muscles too, so we can train them. Okay, so now you are, so don't use your neck. You are going to look up and down. So make sure your head is not moving. You're gonna look up, you're gonna look down just with the eyeballs. Up, down, up, down, up, down, two more sets, down, last set, up, down. Okay, now you go to side to side. Go to one side, don't move your head, go to the other side, switch side, side, side 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 two more sets side side last set side the other side and back to center 
Good. We're going to do the circles. Five circles. So we're going to side, up, side, down. So we're going to do five circles each way. Ready? Go to the side first. Up, side, down, side. That's one, two. Up, side, down, side. Three. Up, side, down, side. Four. Up, side, down, side. Last one. Up, side, down, side. Now go to the other side. Okay. Go to the other way to the side. Ready? One. Up, side, down, side. Two. Side, down, side, three, up, side, down, side, four, up, side, down, side, last one, up, side, down, side, and relax. Relax your eyes. Okay, now. You are going to need your finger, just one, or a pen, whatever. So two ways you could do. So you could bring in to make the cross eyes reach out so you can go from here to there. Or you could keep this here where you're close cross-eyed and you also going to have some uh, uh, focus focus point further out so you could go alternatively look at your fingers cross eyed and look away or you could go keep looking at your fingers out in out in either way okay i kind of like just look at this and look away i'm looking at my bear there okay so let's do well let's let's do both let's try with um keeping this uh keeping the finger steady and uh, find another point further out okay so look at so let's start from crossed close and far away close out in, out, in, out, one more, in, out. Now try moving your fingers in, move out, in, follow your finger, out, three, out, four out five and out close your eyes and relax let's do three breathing breathe in close your eyes breathe out two more breathe in breathe out Last one, breathe in and breathe out. And open your eyes slowly. How was it? Good, good. Wonderful. Good. Excellent. You haven't been worked out like good, that. Good. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Akio. <laughs> Thank you. Can you can you see everything now? <laughs> <laughs> Ready to <laughs> good. It relaxed me so much. All right, so let. I can Have you heard anyone else say that wearing a mask a lot and the way you breathe dries your eyes because the air comes out over over your eyes? Have you heard that? Um. The, what, what was it? What was the? That wearing a mask. Uh huh. Some sort of time. 
causes the air that you breathe to come out above the mask and can cause eye irritation. Oh. Hmm. I mean, oh. if you, I think it's depend on the, how the mask is shaped. I think what I wear is like, it doesn't have a, a really good seal. So I think it just air comes different ways, but it does um, have, I think there, it creates the uh, air path, right? Right. around right. your eyes so I, I it might it might affect your eyes too because it might dry up your eyes yeah. but i that's the only thing i can think of but i i don't know otherwise but use eye drops <laughs> possibly what yeah, happens when, to you, when you wear glasses it fogs up your glasses oh. right yeah, yeah that's, I that's can't horrible wear, i can't yeah. can't yeah. wear it I've tried really? everything. Oh, yeah. I've gone online, YouTube, hmm. everything. One of the things you can do to a keel when our eyes get dry, especially with the allergies, is when we take a shower and that moisture starts to come uh. in, really breathe in that moisture to not mm. only help your sinuses, but your bring back that natural moisture yeah. to your eyes. Like the, the steaming you. machine. Yeah. Facial. All right, let's do some standing yeah. exercise because I wanted to go over the arm stuff. So make sure move stuff around. Make sure you have enough space to get your arms around without knocking stuff. Okay. Okay, I am going to, where's my block? Show. That's great, everybody's doing that. So, the key thing is that, I'm gonna move my plant so I don't know. Jeez. So, the key is to not to use your arms, right? So it's not the arms, but it's your core. And if you think about any kind of athletic movement, sports, martial arts, um, like tennis. Tennis, it's, it's not your arms, right? It's the core moving your arms. So your arms are there to just kind of keep your joints together and keeping the racket but what's hitting is your core right so that's that's where the force is coming from right so imagine that you have no feeling to your arms you have no control over your arm so just think your arms are just a little rope piece of ropes hanging from your shoulders so you don't have control over the movement. So just completely relax your arms and use your core. So this is, this is all you have. It's the hips is moving your arms. I am not moving my arms at all. It's the hips. And many movement like Tai Chi, Qigong, uh, you know, as I said, martial arts, like when you punch, you don't punch this way, right? It comes from the legs, comes from the core. That's, that's where the punch is. This is just the extension of it, right? So this is not a punch. This is just my arms doing. This is not, not the tennis, right? that everything comes from the hip and the engagement of the legs relation to the, you know, it's just that pivot against the floor. It's the rotation. So think about that uh, when you move. Um, so Tai Chi is also, it's not, it's not just your arm stuff. It's just your arm getting your, it's the it's the core getting your arms to move right so that makes sense to you yeah good so think about it's really hard because we use our arms but 
um, kind of fun um, exercise you could do is if you have a really, if you have a soft surface, so don't use, oh, sorry, don't use hard wood, but I'm going to put a blanket over my chair so it doesn't hurt myself, so it doesn't hurt me. Can you see this? I am going to, so this is, this is the goal, but I'm using my arm to go there, but it's, if you relax and if you use your um, core, see that it's different between this versus it's my core to get my arm up. So it's, it's hard not to be aware, but just pretend this is a piece of cord that you're trying to lift up. Just relax, coming from the floor and the hip, and it gets up there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was funny. That's funny, right? It's like, <laughs> it's like, how does that work? But if you, it's, and it, it work, it's easier if you keep this a little bit lower. If it's high, then all you have to do is you have to kind of give that little more explosive movement, but you don't want to do that because you might hurt yourself. But it just, it's just coming from that. It's, you're using the floor, you're using, it's just, it's not, you're not using your arms. So I just wanted to, um, Kind of put that in your head. You know, actually, I've seen I've seen stroke patients who have lost use of their arm doing that to get right, their right. Arm needed to go. Right, because because they can't use it, but you have to use. If you have to do that, then there's your core to move your arms. But it's it's any. Also, you you see in the dances, it's. You could tell it's not very graceful to just use your arms to dance, but if you get your core to get your, to connect to your um, limbs, it's, it's more, that's how we are made to move. And that's how we can look a little more graceful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions? No. Okay. So next week we're going to talk a little more about the face and ear and scalp. Um, maybe we'll revisit the ear points. Um, any and any any other topic that you guys are interested in? I get. The foot Pre massage. Pre the foot massage. That's good. Okay, so let's talk about the feet. Um, if we have time, well, let's let's add some foot. <laughs> foot. Foot massage, and I have a lot of crazy foot exercises we could do. So, um, yeah. So make sure your feet are warm tomorrow. I mean next week when we do that, otherwise you're gonna have some cramps, so. Any questions? Thank you. Good. Thank you. Take care. Great session. Good. Yeah. Great session. Thank you so, Thank so you. much. Thank you very much. Drink water. Drink water. Drink okay. water. Stay Stay work well. on your arm. <laughs> Stay well. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Take care, you guys. Okay. Bye. 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 It'll be great. Bye. See you guys. Bye. -bye. Bye, Melvin. <laughs> Bye, Larry. It's name. Bye, Jen. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Say hi to the man for me. Okay, thank you. <laughs>